y'all are having a great week. We have a subscriber that had emailed us with a couple suggestions on some of the videos that we've done. Um, some really great suggestions of things that we didn't really talk about. So we wanted to jump on today and while we got some time and talk about some of those things. And we want to give a big shout out to Gary. Um, he's been emailing us and giving us some really good suggestions. So we figured instead of trying to put it down in the comments, we would jump on to a quick video and talk about a few of those things. So the first video I want to add a couple of the tips that he suggested on is the DOT inspection video that I did. Um, and these are great, great points. And the first one is if you get pulled over for a DOT inspection or get pulled in at the way station to the scale house for an inspection, stay seated in your seat with your seatbelt on until the officer approaches you and comes up to your window. You want him to see that you have your seatbelt on. You don't want to get pulled over and you take your seatbelt off and go to grab your, your paperwork and he comes up to your truck and you don't have your seatbelt on because he could possibly give you a, a no seatbelt ticket. So that's very important to do that in any inspection, pulled over or, or pulled in at the scale house at the way station. Another point um, from that same video is if you get pulled over or pulled in for an inspection, make sure on your logs, your, if you're on e-logs, that you change your duty status to on duty. Um, a lot of times, if you stop and you don't turn your vehicle off, your e-logs is going to keep you on a driving status. So you want to make sure that you change that to on duty for the inspection. Um, you don't want to get a log violation for that. Um, and it is possible, like our, our viewer Gary had said, he's even gotten a ticket for that before. So that's real important that um, you want to do. So those two tips, I really appreciate him bringing those up and wanted to share those with you. Uh, the seatbelt one's real important because, for instance, with Panther, that's an immediate termination. Right. Uh, you get one seatbelt ticket, you're gone. They, they, they just do not tolerate that. So, you know, and, and to get a ticket for that, when you did have your seatbelt on, just the officer didn't see, um, you know, before you take it off, ask him, can I take my seatbelt off? Just so he knows, so you point out to him, hey, I got my seatbelt on. You can't say I didn't have my seatbelt on. I'm asking you if I can take it off. So, you know, just, just ask before you uh, remove it from, from the buckle. And that's probably any big carrier, not just not just Panther. I'm sure any of them have that policy. You know, if you get a no seatbelt ticket, it's automatic termination. So great points just to, to give you some on, on that video there. Another good tip Gary uh, suggested was, and I totally forgot about this, was whenever you're filling your water for your truck, uh, for the sink, um, you know, a lot of times you, what you want to do is you... Uh, want to sanitize that spigot before you go connecting your hose to it. A um, couple ways you can do that, and it's funny, we, uh, we just did this the other day. Uh, we were filling up the water at a questionable area. It really didn't want to fill it up there, but we really needed water, so what we did was we took a Clorox wipe that we used for cleaning the truck, and we wiped down the, where the, the threads are on the spigot, and we wiped it down, got our finger up inside a little bit, and kind of sanitized that spigot a little bit. Uh, another way that he mentioned, and this is the way a lot of RVers do it, is uh, you get a little like a spray bottle. You can pick them up at the 99 cent store for about a dollar, you know. Walmart usually has them pretty cheap also. And what you want to do is put a little bit of bleach in there and fill the rest of it up with water, and then you can spray that that uh that spick it down and kind of uh get it sanitized some and don't worry it's not going to hurt your water if you get a little bit of bleach in it the uh, the dilution of it is so low that it, it's not harmful at all so that, i thought that was a really good point um you know you never know what that ho uh, spigot's been through what people have done to it attached to it you know i'm sure it's been screwed on to a million times so you know just to be safe, you don't want to pick up any bacteria or anything funky out here, you know. And uh, another one uh, that I thought of, a uh, good point, uh, is about every six months, 
you want to you want to clean your water tank out, um, and the way you do that is you'll you'll take your hose and get like a little funnel and pour about a ble uh, about a cup of bleach into the hose, and then fill the whole tank up with water. Now you're not going to use that water. What you're going to do is drive all day and maybe all night, um, get it sloshed around in there real good. Uh, what another thing you want to do is turn the faucet on at your sink and, until the, the bleach water starts flowing through the, the water lines and you'll be able to smell it. You kind of stick your nose up to where the water's coming out. You'll smell a hint of bleach in there. Once you smell it, you shut it off, drive for 12, 24 hours, 8 hours, uh, longer the better. Um, the water's going to slosh around in the tank and really sanitize that tank out. And then most of these tanks have a, a dump valve on them. And I'll, I'll, I'll show you a picture of that, uh, where our dump valve is. It's right next to where we fill it at. You just turn a little valve and then all your water comes pouring out. Um, you can get to where you're going to fill it up again. Uh, open that valve and let all that bleach water uh, drain out and fill it back up with fresh water again. And it wouldn't, might not hurt to do that maybe twice, you know. Let it drain out, fill it, uh, get it slow, like rock the truck back and forth a little bit to kind of get it rinsed a little bit and then drain it out again. And then also turn the faucet on again so you get all that bleach water that was in your lines rinsed out also. Um, when we get our truck, I'll show a demonstration on how we'll do that. But you can also find some demonstrations on uh, YouTube, uh, sanitizing your water water tank. If you search that on YouTube, you'll find a video. There's a, guy, a YouTube channel by the name of RV Geek. That's where I learned how to do it for our RV. So uh, another good, you know, you want it. after a while, you know, bacteria or mold can grow in there. So doing that about every six months will help keep your uh, water system all fresh. Another great tip we got on that same subject came from Linda Caffey, and I'm sure a lot of y'all know who that is, Linda and Bob. You know, they've been in expediting for a very long time. They do a lot of great things for the expediting and trucking industry. But she had made comment, and what they do is they have two filters that they use for their water tank system. They have one where they that comes from the hose to the tank, their fill hose to the tank, and then one from their tank to their actual water faucet in their truck. And that's a great, great idea to do. You know, we don't drink the water that we fill our water tank up with right now. But, you know, it's still, we do use it to wash dishes, and if you want to cook with that, you know, you, that's a great, great thing to have. And we'll probably be doing that when we get our truck. We just didn't want to splice a bunch of hoses on this truck that we don't own. But that is a great tip that we're going to be using in the truck that we get once that's ready. Now, I'm not really sure what particular filters they're using. There's several different kinds you can get. Um, one, one of them is at Walmart you can get the one that goes to the hose that attaches to the spigot. It's just a screw-on kind of uh, attachment. You can get that at Walmart, and we'll show a picture of it right here. And then and the other kind of filters uh, past the water tank, uh, between your water tank and your sink. Um, you can probably find all kinds of different brands on CampingWorld.com. Um, if you don't own the truck, your owner might not want you cutting hoses and splicing something like that in. But if you're going to be owning your truck, you know, it's a, I know we're going to probably do that to our truck. Add in uh, both filters uh, on the front and back end. So, uh, CampingWorld.com, uh, there's Camping Worlds all over the country too. They have them in store. Or uh, Walmart. Um, Walmart has them over in their camping section, which is kind of over by the automotive area. So you could you could uh, pick one of those up fairly cheap for about twenty bucks, and then I don't know the prices on the Camping World one. I know they got a bunch though. So that's really all we got for you today. Wanted to jump on. We uh, you know want to again thank Gary and Linda for those great tips. Uh, make sure if y'all have time when you watch our videos, check the comments down below because there are some people that have been doing this and are in the business that they do leave some tips in the comments. So 
if you have time, you know, check those out. Um, you know, we can't obviously mention every comment everybody does, but there has been a lot of great uh, tips and comments left down in some of the videos. So check that out if you have time. And thanks again so much to Gary and Linda, all the people that have commented, email us, um, asking for certain videos. We do have some other videos in the works that some people have requested. So. so make sure to keep an eye out tomorrow for the new informational video coming out. It's actually going to be on loading and securing freight. We were able to film some of the, a couple loads over the last couple of weeks to kind of show you how we do that. So, And also how we secure freight, some of the tools we use to do that. So that's going to be the video tomorrow. I, like I told y'all when we were on home time last week, I was going to film a tour of our RV. So I'm I'm finishing up editing that video and I'll have that one out for y'all next week if you want to see that as well as another informational video next Friday. So thank y'all again so much for watching, subscribing, have a great day, and we'll see you in tomorrow's informational video. Bye-bye.